Hi everyone, Yasa Askekala Sirsata to another episode of Dimitra's Dishes. Today I'm going to teach you how to make another chicken skillet dinner that's going to be ready in under an hour. This one is kind of low carb, so it's going to be a little healthier and so creamy and delicious. I'm going to teach you how to make my creamy chicken and cauliflower skillet. Let's get started. Okay, so we're going to begin with the cauliflower because that needs to get started while everything else is going so that way everything is ready all together. So I have some cauliflower florets here. This is about 900 grams, almost two pounds of it. I buy the florets, but you can use a whole cauliflower head and just chop it up and separate the florets. I put the florets in a big bowl and I'm just going to drizzle a little bit of olive oil on top and I like to season them with some salt and some crushed red pepper flakes. If you don't like the crushed red pepper flakes, you can definitely use some freshly cracked black pepper. Go ahead and toss the cauliflower all around. And at this point, you could either use the air fryer or your oven. I like to use the air fryer for this just for easy cleanup and I don't have to turn my oven on. In the air fryer, it takes about 15 minutes. So I set my air fryer to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm gonna put all of the cauliflower in the basket and it's just gonna cook in there for 15 minutes and after that it'll be ready. It'll be nice and fork tender. It's not gonna be falling apart or anything like that and it's gonna get some beautiful color on it. In the meantime, we're gonna get everything else ready. So in this big bowl over here, I have almost three pounds of boneless skinless chicken thigh meat. If you wanna use chicken breast for this, you can totally do that. Mine has some liquid in here because it's been sitting out for a little while. If you're counting carbs, you're gonna to wanna to make sure to pat the chicken dry so that way you need less flour for it. So I'm gonna season both sides with some salt and black pepper. And then you can add between two to four tablespoons of flour just to make sure that the chicken is nicely coated all around. This flour is gonna thicken the sauce and it's also gonna create a little bit of a, a skin on top of the chicken, which is really nice. Before you start pan frying the chicken, get your onion ready. I have one large onion here. I'm just gonna peel it and finely chop it so that way it's all ready to go. My pot is heating over medium high heat. I'm gonna coat the bottom with some olive oil. So about a quarter of a cup, maybe a little bit more. I don't really measure. Get it nice and hot and we're gonna brown the chicken in two batches. I think my pot fits about four pieces at a time so I'm not gonna overcrowd it so that way the chicken browns evenly. All you need is about two to three minutes per side. Once it's nice and golden on one side, go ahead and flip it and let it get nice and golden on the other side. Transfer the chicken to a plate and do the same thing with the second batch until all the chicken is nice and brown. If you need to add a little bit more olive oil at this point, you can, but I have enough. So I'm gonna add my onions to the pot with a little pinch of salt and I'm gonna let these cook until they're nice and soft and golden for about eight to 10 minutes. Once the onions are ready, I have six garlic cloves that are grated. I'm just gonna add them in and just warm them through just until they're nice and fragrant. I'm gonna return the chicken to the pot just so that way everything goes back in. And I'm also gonna add the seasonings. So I have a teaspoon of dried oregano. I'm gonna add a heaping teaspoon of dried thyme to this. And I'm also gonna add one and a half cups of chicken stock and the juice of one or two lemons. You can start with one lemon and add more later on if you want. Give everything a nice mix and I'm gonna cover the pot, reduce the heat to a medium low and I'm gonna let this simmer for about 10 to 15 minutes or until the chicken is fully cooked. Once the chicken is done cooking, I'm gonna add the cauliflower and a cup of heavy whipping cream to the pot and I'm gonna give everything a nice mix and let it warm through for a few minutes. It's gonna thicken a little bit and you can taste the seasoning at this time. If it needs more seasoning, you could go ahead and add some salt, pepper, oregano. And then I like to crumble some feta on top of this. It's up to you how much you want to add on top. I like to add a good amount of it to make it nice and creamy and salty and delicious. And that's it, it's ready to serve. You could serve this topped with some fresh parsley. And just like that, the meal is ready and it smells so good. I wish you guys could smell this. I topped this with a gremolata because I had it on hand. I love to have it in the fridge. It's just basically, your favorite herbs, I use parsley and then some garlic, lemon juice and lemon zest, and I put some oil in there, but it's so good and so flavorful. If you don't have it, or if you don't feel like making it, like doing that one extra step, which just takes five minutes, <laughs> you can definitely just top the meal with some fresh parsley and it'll be good to go. But if you do have it, it'll just kick it up a little more because it does have that lemon in it and it's so good. Time for the taste test. Mmm. So good. Absolutely delicious. Cauliflower has to be one of my favorite vegetables. I love it when it's roasted. I love that you can roast it in the air fryer, which just makes life so easy. 
I don't know about you, I don't clean my air fryer each time I use it, so that's why I love to use it. Whereas if I was roasting this in the oven, which is also really easy, I would have to clean that pan. So less work makes it more delicious if you ask me. But this tastes so good. The cauliflower is a little slightly sweet. The sauce is just perfect, not too heavy. The feta cheese, of course, makes everything better. I love using chicken thighs because, like I said before, they're very juicy. But in this recipe, you can totally substitute chicken breast and it'll come out just as good. Just be careful not to overcook it. You have to keep a really close eye on the time because if you overcook chicken breast, it gets a little bit dry. I think you guys are going to love this one. If you're not watching your carbs, it tastes delicious over mashed potatoes with some bread and a nice salad over rice. There's just so many ways to serve this. I hope you guys give this recipe a try. You can head on over to the website, himitrasdishes.com, to print it out and make it. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below, and I'll see you all next time. Yes, us.